high linear algebra students. So video number four, it's, it's going to be a rather short one, honestly, because uh, video number five, uh, I have to present the concept of skew lines in order to get into it. So in this video, quite short, uh, second application of the cross product, uh, more particularly the cross product here, is to find the normal vector to a plane, okay? Uh, so this is good only in R3, by the way. Uh, so let's actually write this down. So in R3, okay? Um, and what's the setup? Well, it's very simple actually, okay? Because the normal vector to a plane can be taken to be any vector as long as the vector is orthogonal to both direction vectors. If you remember the topic of planes, uh, in um, like planes, that's it, 5.4, like the normal vector to a plane, uh, basically we were finding it by looking at uh, the, the vector that is orthogonal to both u and v. Okay, well, we saw just like one video ago that the cross product turns out to be orthogonal to both u and v, which means that if you are in our tree, right, this works in our tree only. So don't take this as a magic trick, right? Because in R4, you have to do the full process that we, do, that we saw in section uh, 5.4. But if we are in our tree, since uh, as long as the vector is orthogonal, we're good, we can actually choose the cross product to represent our uh, normal vector, okay? So uh, now let's put, this, let's put this into application. We are given three points. Uh, a, B, C, which I can represent here. And I want to find the normal equation of the plane that contains all of them, that contains A, B, and C, okay? Uh, take note that these are the same points that I gave in the last problem, in video number three, okay? Uh, that being said, we will redo all of the calculations just because I don't remember them on top of my head. So... Uh, it's the same idea. We want to engineer the vectors u and v. So vector u will be b minus a. And I remember in the last video, like it was the same thing. I don't want to mess up. So I will actually write the vectors as they are. Okay. And as you can see, you will have negative 2, 1, and 0. Actually, I think I can go a little bit well, okay, no, I, I won't go quicker, honestly. I will just do, do, do this problem as if it was like a standalone example. So then you engineer the vector v, which is c minus a, and now c is going to be three, uh, 2, negative 3, 1, minus 3, 0, 1, which is equal to, uh, as you can see, you're going to have negative 1, negative 3, 0. All right, yes, I will actually go faster. So I won't compute uh, the cross product because the cross product, we found it in the earlier number. So, all right, what do we do now? Well, the vector n, okay? will be uh, the cross product of u and v, okay? And if I remember correctly, uh, okay, so this determinant, we had literally just seven. Okay, so uh, that's it. The cross product was, uh, the, the normal vector was zero, zero, seven, okay? That being said, um, Okay, so it turns out that this vector is a scalar multiple of the vector 0, 0, 1, okay? And we're going to use this to our advantage, okay? So, um, so instead of choosing the cross product, we will choose, so choose instead n to be equal the vector 0, 0, 1. Okay, so we have almost all of the ingredients, but something that I didn't mention, but you should know, right, is that we have to also engineer our vector, our position vector, okay? So don't forget, like, we need the position vector in order to uh, be able to move further, 
okay? But the position vector can be taken to be any of these points, right? So uh, can be taken to be A, B, or C, okay? So in other words here, we're going to choose uh, P. We're going to choose, let's say, A, okay? So let's choose that P is equal to A. So write it as a vector, which means 3, 0, 1. So what do we have left to do? Well, we need to compute B. So we know that uh, it's not a vector, okay? It's a constant. We know that B is equal to the, the dot product of the normal vector with the position vector that we engineered, right? We chose one of the points. So, all right, let's go. We have three components, but as I can see, it's going to be very simple, right? Because the normal vector is simply 0, 0, 1. Uh, yeah, 0, 0, 1. And the position vector is simply 3, 0, and 1. So, as a result, we're getting that B is equal to 1. Putting this all together. Okay, so the only color that I didn't use yet is black, so might as well. Putting this all together, we have that the plane is going to be. So, okay, let's be a little bit lousy here. Uh, so we're going to have like x1 plus, like let's say x2 plus x3. And then these are the components of our normal vector, 0, 0, 1. And then it's going to be equal to the value of B that we, that we found, right? Equal to 1. So let's just simplify this to get the final result. The plane is simply uh, x3 equals 1. Which what you have to imagine here is that what it means is that x1 and x2 can be any, any real value, but x3 has to be equal to 1. Okay, so in other words, it's the plane that is parallel to the x1, x2 plane, but has an x3 coordinate to be equal to 1. All right, I hope this helps, and we'll see each other in the hopefully the last video, so video number 5 at that point, I think, which I will present the theory of skew lines and how to, how to use the triple product to determine if two lines are skew or not. See you there!